as we always do, a benchmark. Now in Philly sports and all over the country, from coast to coast, as Howard Cosell and everyone would say, and as Jim McKay would say, back in the days of ABC Sports, spanning the globe to give you a constant variety of Big Sills takes. Big Sills! Welcome aboard. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys stepping in. Let's go. Absolutely flexing. We so appreciate it. I mean, you want to hear something crazy? I'm not even sure Xander knows this. You know, this is the time of the year where everyone goes, damn, where's the content? Where, where, where is the content? Where's the content? I'm going to make, and I'm going to show you an example of people surrendering to big seals and to you. You ready? So the National Football League Network, the NFL Network, Total Access went dark this week. Because you know why? Producers didn't have enough content this week. They went dark. I say it's a lack of talent. If you can't come up in an age today where you have 24-7 intel about the National Football League or about anything going on in sports, I don't think you're very talented. The NFL Network's morning show is dark this week because they can't find enough content. And they cover all 32 NFL teams. And I'm just little old Sills, four hours a day, banging away. Sometimes the days are up here. Sometimes the days are down here. But you know what you never get? You never get a different from me when it comes to what we deliver to you every day. Think about that. And I so appreciate, I know, you guys come here each and every single day, and I can't thank you enough. The NFL Network, owned by 32 owners. Okay? You mean to tell me you shut your morning show down because you can't find enough to say? I think that's pathetic. Weak and lack of talent. Lack of talent. But that's everywhere. Absolutely lack of talent. I mean, how in the world do you not have enough content in sports? Say something else. Bring something up. Make something up. I don't care. Give me a break, man. Hey, by the way, this thing is absolutely killing it. And I have to thank each and every single one of you for doing this, okay? March Madness, it's tipped off, man. Let's go, baby. Absolutely, Jacob Sports and our great friends at Underdog Fantasy are looking for 500 people. Let's get it going. These games are already awesome. Our loyal viewers, and you are our loyal viewers and subscribers. We're looking for 500, and we're getting up there. And everyone, I'm so proud of what you guys have done for us. Thank you. 10 bucks. That's it. They match it. 20 bucks. They match it all the way up to 100. It's as simple as that. So already, get this. It's like being a stockbroker going, hey, you want to make 10 bucks? Give me 10 bucks. There you go. You're not out anything. And you get to have some fun during one of the great seasons in sports. That's the NCAA tournament, too. So, again, all the way up to 100 bucks. Now, here's the deal. Okay, you got to remember now, you got to use the promo code WIN, W-I-N. That's W-I-N. And we're partnering up with our great friends at Underdog Fantasy. And good luck to you. We'll keep bringing it up. I got my, hey, dude, I got UConn. You know I'm not going to go against UConn to win the national title. I'm a Connecticut guy. I'm always going to root for Connecticut. 
How you doing, right? Paris Campbell, who's that? Paris Campbell, who's that? Never heard of him. What do you got? 30 catches or something? Where was he? With the what another dime store signed by Howie? Who's that? <laughs> who who did they sign? They signed a nobody. Special teams guy. Sure, okay. That's right, Dave. He's a lift driver. Wide receiver. Hey, thanks, Big Chris. Who? They signed Campbell's suit. Okay. Sills, wrench me. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Steve? How you doing, baby? Hey, Steve, you give me a ton of shit, but I appreciate you being here, dog. I really do. May I please kind of deviate before we get on to some topics here? This is about Shohei Otani. You hear all the media people? I think you live to be outraged. I mean, I think what the news media has done to you, they're teaching you to be outraged by everything. <gasps> Can you believe Shohei Otani's involved with gambling? Oh, you're that outraged? Are you really that outraged? Here. This is something you'll get from nowhere else. I think it's the greatest thing ever happened to baseball since the PED scandal. This is fabulous. Superstar worldwide star like Messi and Shohei Otani. This guy's enormous all over the world. You got gambling. Illegal bookies, Dodger brand. Man, this is great for baseball. This is the best thing ever happened to baseball. You know why? You're relevant again. You have a story. Congratulations. And it involves your superstar. Do you know how big Babe Ruth was back in the day? Shohei Otani is actually a modern-day Babe Ruth. Broads and booze and betting. That's who the babe was. And you got it here, man. Thank God. This is the best thing ever happened to sports. And especially for a sport that no one gives a shit about until after the first 25 games. You now have a story that competes with the NFL. You now have something. You don't get it, do you? You, you just don't get it. The NFL has a market on this shit. You know the kneeling story? God, that was great for TV. That was so great. Then when it started to affect the advertisers, what happened? The NFL yanked it. You don't see any more kneeling? Nothing to do with it. The, they don't even show you the national anthem anymore. The Better Bing Show with the bad guy, Dan Bone Crusher Cilio. No, 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 Q. I got I to gotta be kind. I promised my aunt I wouldn't use that line. She got a little upset with me on it because she thought it was too political. I got to curb my politics sometimes. You know, between my aunt and my kid, I got to watch myself. <laughs> Free Pete Rose. Oh, my God. This is great. Free Shoeless Joe. Free Shoeless Joe. This is awesome. Can, and, and you know what you have? You have all the do-gooders out there going, this is a real black guy on the sport of baseball. No, it's not. This is awesome for baseball. You got a gambling superstar? Who cares if it's true or not? Nobody cares today in the news media for story, Russia hoax this or what have you. But nobody cares about the truth anymore. They care about the sensationalism of it. Small letters in journalism. Big letters in entertainment. That's what it is, and it's all about. I listen to everyone going, this is just a black guy on the game of baseball. 
Baseball has a black eye on it. You know why? Because no one cares about it. No one cares about it. Now, the greatest player, and I think Shohei Otani is the greatest player I've ever seen. You know why? I've never seen a guy win 15 ball games and hit 50 homers. I've never. In my, this is a modern day Babe Ruth. This is, this is Babe Ruth. But the difference is Babe didn't do it at the same time. They pitched. Then he hit. Oh, tail end of his pitching career, he was hitting. He led the league in home runs. He hit 29 in Boston. And he was still pitching. You know, Ruth had the all-time record for scoreless innings in a World Series until Whitey Ford broke it in 61. You, did you know, from like 1919 till 61, Ruth had the record for the most scoreless innings pitched in a World Series. He was on his way to the Hall of Fame as a pitcher. Oh, my God, Bonds. I loved Barry Bonds. Home run and roids. Man! A villain. Every sport needs a villain. That's why the Patriots sold. Every sport loves a villain. If you don't have a villain, you don't really have any content. This Shohei Otani story is awesome. Best thing happened to baseball since these guys were plugging each other's asses with steroids. Absolutely. I miss the steroid era. You had villains versus the good guys. Black hats and white hats. You guys don't get it. Drama sells. That's why we see more reality television shows today. Because it's stupid drama. Housewives of Orange County. <laughs> the New Jersey chicks. Come on, dude. The Osbournes. It's not quality TV on anymore. It's Shohei Otani time. That's the beautiful thing about this. Hey, hey, man. You guys, th this is awesome. Congratulations, baseball. You finally have, you finally have a story that I'm interested in. Holy cow, can you imagine a foreign star like Shohei Otani giving a guy money to place bets for him. That's my take. An interpreter has access. That's like saying that my that's like saying that my personal driver that takes me back and forth from the ballpark has an ATM card with my name on it. <laughs> Why would I do that? Any guy in his right mind. That would be like giving a guy who bags my groceries at the grocery store every day, and I happen to like him. Hey, here's my credit card. Keep it in your wallet when you need. If I need anything, I'll have you go buy it for me. You get something for yourself. <laughs> that couple million dollars missing. Who gives a shit? I'm not keeping tabs on that thing. Really? Hey, I know you got money to burn, dog, but that thing is not legit. He gave him the money to bet for him. You know he did. Oh, what are they going to do with him? They're not going to do anything to him. Are you crazy? This is the biggest thing they've had, like I said, since Babe Ruth. And he's a Dodger. Thank God. Thank God. All right. All of the moves made by the Eagles are positive. We need to increase competition across the board with all these moves. I think they will pick the best available player in the draft. That's our great friend, Prince. And Prince, thank you very much. Prince reminds me that I will not miss any of the um, Super Chats. Thank you very much. All the moves made by the Eagles are positive. He's looking at addressing the position and he's not debating prince 
Tell me if I'm correctly dissecting your take here. You're looking at them addressing the position, not so much whether they're going to be good or not, but they're addressing it. And in your opinion, what they're going to do here in free agency is continue to address positions that are not as deep. And then they're going to go into the draft and do the same thing. So you're not debating whether or not Bryce Huff fits or whether or not Devin White is going to be good. You're just looking at it. They're addressing stuff. So in that context, you're correct. Okay. You see, that's funny. When, when, when James or Xander post something, they'll, they'll, one thing will say one thing like, the further you move Hurts away from being a passer, like I think this was the one James did yesterday, that the further you move, and this is what I said about Jalen, the further you move Hurts away from being an RPO guy and being a passer, the further away you are from a Super Bowl. And a guy, the guy posted, well, which is it, Sill? You don't want dual threat, but which is it? You want him to pass the ball or be a dual threat? I don't want him to be anything except what he is. You missed the whole entire point in the context of what we said yesterday. Personally, I think you get closer to a Super Bowl when Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts, the RPO guy. The more you pass the ball, Jalen Hurts will never get back there because he's not a prototypical passer. He's not. Okay? He's not. It's not what he is. And the guy goes, well, what? No. This is not my quarterback. This is your quarterback. This is the guy they're choosing. Okay? I've already looked. I've laid this out numerous times for you. I'm going to start it out with something that I posted on my Twitter page, Dan Cilio Show. And I want to ask this question here. So who's this guy they signed? What's his name? Campbell? Who's the guy they just signed at wide receiver number three? Okay. Who's the guy they signed? What's his name? Paris Campbell? Everyone forgets 22? What's 22 have to do with 2024? Nothing. Nothing. Everyone forgets about 2022. I'm not sure what that even means. Paris Campbell. Who's that? The kid Parker. Okay. You know, you'd like to have seven wide receivers going into a season. What's 20? A, a, a flexing. The only thing they can bring up 22. Okay. Is it's the only time he was really good. Because the other two years, he wasn't. Do you understand that, right, Flexen? They have one year to bring up. And if he doesn't play well this year, you'll have three years of mediocre football in one good year, and he will be officially a one-year wonder. Okay? He'll officially be a one-year wonder. If this guy doesn't play great with all this talent around him, he'll be a one-year wonder. There's no getting around that. The pressure's on Jalen not to be a one-year wonder. We shall find out. By the way, I think Kellen Moore is a nice upgrade. I'm going to get to that here in a minute as well. We signed a quarterback from the Raiders. That's right, Joho. Who are these people? I think it goes down the line of what Prince said. They're just signing anybody's. Well, I have one for you then. Why don't you sign Odell Beckham for wide receiver three? He's down in Miami right now, and I know he is because Dolphin people told me. And he is willing to be the third wideout behind Jalen Waddle and behind Tyree Kill. Prince goes, why? He's better than anything you have right now at wide receiver three. And you get him at a league minimum. He's not getting $15 million from the Dolphins. So wait a minute. Look what Jay says. 
He'd rather have Paris Campbell than Odell Beckham Jr. as your number three at league minimum. It's a Russell Wilson deal. And the kid Parker's not better than Beckham. And he's cheaper. That's a gamble you make. Okay? Someone goes, he's washed. Well, you had 36 combined catches. So you'd rather have Queasy Watkins, some dude named Parker, and some guy named Paris Campbell than a guy that will take the league minimum and is Odell Beckham Jr. as your wide receiver three. If anything, the name recognition alone is a decoy in your huddle. Slagger goes like this. Parker's mid, but he's still better than Quez. Park, I, I don't mind Parker on the team. Parker and, hey, Parker and Odell can split time. Sure. Two pros, and then you draft a guy. Now you have a wide receiver room. The thing is, I didn't realize Odell Beckham would take that role. I thought this was going to come down to money and the role. But he's down now talking to Chris Greer down with the Dolphins. The situ- By the way, I could see him landing in Dallas as the number two guy. Now, do I think he's a number two? Not really. But a number three at league minimum? Chris goes like this, Campbell can fly, but he can't play. He's Jalen Rager. He was a second round pick. Nobody lets a second round pick go who was just drafted a few years ago. He's not very good. I don't think he's very good. And since you don't use wide receiver three, why not put a name there? I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Odell Beckham Jr., Dallas Goddard, and Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts in that old line. You don't think you'd have a defensive coordinator staying up night, having nightmares, if you threw that offense out at somebody? And then when you have wide receiver three and you have Paris Campbell, Well, I know they're not going there. (laughs) Not enough footballs to go around? Well, shit, that's going to be the issue right there. See, look at this. Let me say this to you here. Somebody's saying he's washed. Okay. Um, Odell Beckham. 35 catches, 565 yards, and three touchdowns he had in Baltimore. That's more than your entire group of wide receivers at number three had the entire year. And you could get him at a league minimum. So he's matched what you do. And if he can put those numbers up, you upgrade to three hole at a cheaper price with a veteran. You're not thinking correctly. Guys aren't thinking correctly. I'm not asking him to come in. Everyone knows he's not a star anymore. Everyone knows he has a star name and he can still make some plays. And he's cheap. Okay? And he's cheap. That's the point, LJ. I agree. Barkley's the third wideout. Why don't you put a guy over there that someone would have to defend, though? Paris Campbell. I don't have to defend him. I'm not going to let Odell Beckham run down the sideline. And by the way, let me ask you something. How about this one? Okay, let me get this for you. How many people do you think have in their secondary in the NFC right now a defensive back if Beckham, if Odell Beckham was in the three-hole could cover him? On their foot, you don't have one. Gardner Johnson couldn't cover Beckham. 
And I'll tell you something else. Blankenship would get destroyed by him. You don't have anybody to cover him. You make it sound like you could cover him. Let me say this to you one more time. With your defense in the shape that it's in, okay, you couldn't cover him if he was the third wide out. If he's your first wide out, you got him covered and blanketed pretty good. This is about mismatches and matchups and money. Why not? You're signing everyone. Guy, you're signing guys I've never heard of. Okay? You, 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 you sign, you're signing guys we've never heard of. How are you happy with all these signs? Okay, that's right. Actually, I thought he made $16 million. He's nowhere in the market going to get that this year. For 35 catches, he's already told the Dolphins he'll take a league minimum. He told the Jets that he would take $4 million to come in there. The Jets said no way. He knows where he's at. So you know what he did? Let me go where there's Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill and in Miami. With a quarterback that could get me the ball in a creative play calling head coach where I can get some functional numbers and maybe a ring. Parker's making the league minimum. That's right. That's the only thing you're, you, oh my God almighty. I'm trying to make a deal here for a guy and you guys are like, well, he's not Beckham, the 1400 yard. I know this. So does the league know this? So does Beckham know this? So does Beckham. He knows this. Okay? I mean, well, if you're going to take swings, LJ, why not take a swing at Beckham? It'll cost you nothing. You took a swing on Devin White. Why not Beckham? And it's just, since he's since how he likes signing big names, why not Odell Beckham? So why nobody else wants Beckham? That's not the case. Beckham now is looking for a landing spot. Now that he's told teams he'll take a subservient role in an offense, anybody in their right mind would sign him. League minimum, $1.2 million. There's no money up front. And you bring in a guy, like you said, last year signed a $17 million deal. And he is Odell Beckham. LJ's like, you're making this sound like Madden 24. No, I didn't make it sound like Madden 24. Your GM did. And for the record, one more time. Third wide receiver just needs to play that role of three to 500 yards receiving and be good. Well, he had 536 yards and 35 catches. Isn't that what we're saying? Combined, you had that with everyone that played in the three hole for you last year. He did that by himself. How does that not make sense? You're not paying anything. You're not risking anything. And you're adding another component to your team that someone would have to defend. I don't have to defend Devontae Parker or Paris Campbell. I don't I didn't have to defend that position last year. With Beckham in that role, I would. Because he's gonna make a you you're not just gonna let that guy run free. I'll let Parker run free. I'll let Campbell run free. They're not very good players. Okay, you talk like people can't get better. Like who? Have you ever seen at a linebacker that gets released by a team at 26 years old and he goes on and becomes a superstar Ray Lewis player? And that's what you're hoping for with Devin White. Devin White is not getting better. Teams just don't release guys and they get better. By the way, the Eagles, in theory, are releasing Hassan Reddick. 
as soon as they get a deal that they like, they're letting him go. Hassan Reddick said, and I'm I'm paraphrasing, he knew his time was over after the Bucks game. After the Buccaneer playoff game. Okay? TJ Edwards got better and you cut him. Or you didn't even offer him a contract. And plus, he wasn't a, a guy on another team in another organization. He was an Eagle UDFA. You developed him, and once you did, you let him walk out the building because Howie didn't draft him. Poor example. He wasn't on somebody else's team. OBJ would destroy our already fragile locker room. No way. Our cheerleading coach couldn't handle that. That's probably more it, Big Marshall, because if they're afraid to bring Justin Fields in for competition or maybe pretend competition for Jalen Hurts, they probably would be afraid, and that's why they would rather have Paris Cam Paris Campbell is a prime example of the fears that that front office has, just like they did with Justin Fields. Xander, I heard Jody talking this morning. Jody's right. Justin Fields was the better backup, but they didn't want to take the risk of bringing him in to rattle the cages and everyone at the link because that guy might look better in the offense. And all of a sudden, you see screams for this guy to be playing if Hurts doesn't turn it around. And, and for the record, here, here, here's a great example, what that guy just said. So you're suggesting then that Justin Fields can't get better? Which is it? According to your take, then, Justin Fields can't get better. Is that right? Okay. I mean, right? In your opinion, Fields can't get better. Anthony says Fields wasn't taking Hertz's job. Hertz wasn't taking Wentz's job, right, Anthony? Anthony, right? Hertz wasn't taking Hertz wasn't taking Wentz's job. Hertz will turn it around. He's done it. He has never done it. He's never done it at the pro level, turned his career around. That's what 2024 is all about. Okay? That that that's what 24 is. We'll find out. Okay? They're saying if Russell sucks in training camp, Fields will take the starting job. Yeah, they signed Pickett, the lesser player, because they were afraid of that. Okay. Wentz quitting on no, 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 no. Jalen Hurts was never brought here to take Carson Wentz's job. So when you say that Fields wouldn't have taken his job, or if Pickett wouldn't have taken his job. That's not a that's not accurate. The Eagles will pivot. The Eagles will pivot. Absolutely not, Steve. Hertz will never see or get close to a Lombardi trophy ever again. Not the current course they have him on. That's not happening. He's not going to throw that team into the Super Bowl. They're going to run their way into a Super Bowl if they are ever. He will not throw a team into a Super Bowl. That is a prediction that I make, and I stand by it. He will never throw that team into a Super Bowl. Now, he'll dual threat one in, but they're getting away from that. Paris Campbell is better than Queasy Watkins, so I like him. Dude, Vince Papali's better than Queasy Watkins. Okay? Vince Papali's better. Vince Papali's better than Marshmallow Watkins. Come on now. Absolutely. Sills, they said the same thing in 2021 and 22 campaign. Uh, said what? Hey, that dude will never in a million years throw that team into a Super Bowl. He'll dual threat one back, but 
I don't believe they're going to go there. We're signing three to five death wide. Three to five death. Here's who you signed. Devontae Parker, Paris Campbell, and who? Okay. Oh, here's another guy with a 2022. Last year, he had 100 yards. Oh, yeah. And what he was drafted in the second round, and the Colts cut him or cut him loose. He must be really great. Must be spectacular. He was a second rounder. And the Colts let him walk out the building too. Man, he's a great player. Hey, 2022, you guys sound like Jet fans. 69, baby. 69. 69, 73, 2000. Okay, yeah, baby. Look at all these nobodies you're signing. This thing's fabulous. I mean... If he was so good, why did Colts dump his ass? You need all the wide receivers and playmakers you can get for your new toy quarterback, don't you? For Anthony Richardson? They let big star Paris Campbell go. Woo! LJ superstar Paris Campbell. Now that he's an eagle and how he signed him, superstar Paris Campbell. <laughs> Holy shit. Paris Campbell is now being hyped up. Like, this guy's the next coming of A.J. Owens. You guys got to kid me, man. Yeah, right. Let's see. Remember, you didn't like Barkley signing. Now you do. No, I don't like the Barkley signing. I think the money could have been appropriate. I never said I liked the Barkley signing. I'm saying he's an added, like, like the Philly Godfather said. It's like buying two Ferraris. Okay. Congratulations. He's a good player. I don't think he's who you think he is. I'm not going down there again. I never liked the – I'd rather have – how about this? Who would you rather have, Barkley or Xavier McKinney? Let's watch and see how many dumbasses we have in here. Who would you rather have, Xavier McKinney or Odell Beckham Jr.? Or excuse me, Xavier McKinney or Barkley? Who would you rather have? Look at Jay. Barkley. Both. I didn't say both. I'm telling you, who would you rather have? Look at the people who would take Barkley. I didn't know the running back position was a problem. Your safety position is a massive problem. Your defense is a massive problem. You'd rather have Barkley than a high productive safety. Yeah, that Campbell signing is a Sirianni signing. Come on, Sills. They got to hype their cheerleader. Absolutely. Oh, and by the way, Shane Steichen, if he, am I right? He was a Colt. Am I right? He was a Colt, right? So Shane Steichen didn't even like him. Shane Steichen got rid of him, and Nick signed him. Yeah, it's because Nick's decisions, that's according to you guys. Shane Steichen didn't even like him. <laughs> and you signed a guy that the Colts head coach didn't want. Oh, Giants last year? I'm sorry. I can't keep track of all the stiffs in the league. I can't. People, There's actual people in here that think the Barkley sign is a better sign than signing an Xavier McKinney. Um, once again, man, you don't have a very good football team. You have a great offense, but you don't have a very good football team. You don't have a good football team. You just don't. Yo, Sills, who are you most excited in the draft? Heard this is a good O-line draft. Great question, my friend. Um,
there's not a wow guy unless you're in love with receivers. And personally, I think the best guy in the draft is that Brock Bowers kid. Tight end position in today's NFL is a priority. It's a massive position when it comes to moving the sticks. Every good team that wins ball games has a great tight end. The shitty linebackers that are in the league today is one of the reasons why that position has become so dominant. I mean, I really like this kid Bowers. Now, thought he was injured last year. His freshman year, he was unstoppable. But I really like this kid, okay? I really do. I Listen, guys. Yeah, that Campbell signing, the Sirianni signing. Come on, Sills. They, they got to hype their cheerleader up. Yeah, you know, it's Shane Steichen and, um, and, 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 and Nick. And that's probably a Nick sign. Just like that kid he got from the Colts a couple years ago when he was over there at OC. I draft another tight end. Goddard can't stay healthy. Nick, absolutely. Okay? Absolutely, Nick. I completely agree. 1,000%. Absolutely. Look, here. I want to make it very clear here. My friends, nobody believes you've upgraded your defense. Except the national guys who don't cover you. They don't cover you. I do. You're not better against the run. You're not better against the pass. Where are you better? Maybe pass rush? Why? You're getting rid of Reddick. Could care less about wide receiver three. Goddard needs to be used. Martin. Correct. And they couldn't use him last year. Absolutely. Only you think that. Get this, Jay thinks his defense is good when you went one and eight. You think you're good, Jay, and you went one and eight. Where do you see that? As a Cowboy fan, I want the Oregon center. He's a good player too. That kid, I think his name is Parker. Um, I think the Bucs are going to grab him, okay? I think the Bucs grab him. Um, hey, I'll tell you one thing. 304, Cowboys need a DT, man. That kid, Mozzie Smith. Um, there's dudes that are in the Hudson River that the mafia threw in with cement shoes that have better feet than him. <laughs> okay? Seriously, man. There's about four guys, John Gotti, and the Gambino crime family threw into the Hudson that have cement shoes on. And I promise you, have better feet than Mozzie Smith. Okay? I mean, big old Mozzie, man. He can't move them cement shoes. That's his new nickname. Mozzie Cement Shoes. You got it, man. That guy moves like Luca Brazzi. Very slowly. <laughs> Very slowly. Okay? That was a shit sign, dog. Cowboys got a... Hey, they got a lemon. They they went on to the a, a Xander. They went on to the Aston Martin lot and went, well, you know, they, they, they kind of shop like Howie. You know, I like this guy, man. There's something about him. He went to Michigan. By the way, Michigan guys, very few of them have really panned out. And the only guy that really has panned. And by the way, they even hated the goat in, in Ann Arbor. Lloyd Carr hated Brady. Hated him. Wanted to give the job to Drew Henson every chance they could get. Cowboy fans said Mozzie was better than Carter. No, they said he was the next Reggie White. Mozzie sucks. I want the Texas kid, Murphy. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good, 304. He does. He looks pretty good. He does. Hey, hey, hey. Jordan Davis is better by far than Mozzie. By far. Here, here. You 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 want to get? You 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 want you want this, dude? Jalen Carter, Mozzie Smith. Holy cow. Mozzie Smith will never be in the room with that guy. 
He'll never be in the room with Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis is superior to that kid. He's superior. He's just not what you thought he was going to be. Or he, uh, he's, he's what I thought you would be. He would be a two-down guy. Okay? Sills has made the Eagles the worst run team in football. No, 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 not Sills. Your team was the worst run defense in the last eight weeks of the season. Not me. You were giving up 145 yards a game, Hutch. That's great. Look at Hutch lying. Okay? Hutch is telling you, Cilio made the Eagles the worst run team in the league. Last eight, hey, you guys want to go 10-1? and one? Well, the last eight weeks of the season, you had the worst run defense in pro football. So it is the worst run defense. It is. You're not telling the truth, Hutch. You're not. You're not telling the truth. No. Don't need to put glasses on. Run defense was terrible. Did you not see everybody out rushing you? Hell, you couldn't even run the ball. You were getting out rushed and out rushed on. People were beating you like you had your hands tied behind your back at the line of scrimmage. Both line of scrimmages surrendered. Eagles haven't improved all these moves. That's right. And get this. That's right, Hollywood. That's my point. People are saying because it's the offseason that they have improved their defense. No, they haven't. Seals, how many games did the Cowboys win this season? Hmm. That's a really good point. Let me do something here. Before I do the Cowboys, let me do the Eagles. On how many games I think the Eagles. How about this? I can't, I don't really like to do that. It's kind of insane. Let's do this. How many offenses can that Eagle defense stop that are teams that they're going to play next year? How many teams will be the better unit versus the Eagle defense? Let's take a look at that. Obviously, the division opponents. Washington, you'll split with them. You'll split with Washington. So you're one and one. Cincinnati, your defense can't stop Joe Burrow. That's one and two. Your defense will not stop Joe Burrow. Baltimore with Derrick Henry. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, Xander, James, you better get clips out for that game because that's going to be what we like to call in certain, <laughs> hey, in certain places in the NFL, that's going to be called a roadmap highlight film. And that's going to be called a road grader. And please, this is what you don't want to be in a game like that. You do not want to be posterized by Derrick Henry, by Lamar Jackson, running the ball at Reed Blanket. <laughs> Can you imagine what Derrick Henry's going to do to Jimmy Dean sausage linebacker Nakobe? My God almighty. Seriously. Seriously, Nakobe Dean might be in traction, and he could be on a gurney. If I were the Eagles and Big Dom, I would have a rescue unit with a helicopter ready when Derek when, when Derek Henry comes rolling in and plays you guys. 
Hey, hey, Xander, you better have a helicopter to get you to the nearest hospital because he's going to run the shit over you. Oh, wait, the great, the great Betty White is going to stop him. Who? Huff. <laughs> that guy might have 400 yards on you. <laughs> Holy shit. You're one in three. That thing won't be close. You'll be blown out. So you're one and three. Dallas, you'll split. You're two and four. New Orleans, you'll win that game. Oh, wait, their defense is pretty good. Uh, I just don't think, I hate Derek Carr. I don't know. He'll throw the ball picks and shit. I, I'm going to, I guess so. They don't really have the same offense. So you're three and four. The Giants, you'll split like you did this year. So you're four and five. Atlanta, you'll lose that game. Kirk Cousins and that offense with Pitts. Who's covering Pitts? Who's covering Pitts? Who, who, who's covering Pitts? There they are right there, 24 schedule of teams to play. You're four and six versus Atlanta. Let's see here. Carolina, you'll win that bitch. Carolina, I don't know. David Tepper, I don't really think they have a lot of offense to really challenge your defense. That's not very good. Cleveland, ah, my God, that'll be a bloodbath too. Holy cow. Good night. See you later. <laughs> David Ajaku, who covers that dude? Who covers David Ajaku? Let me guess. The greatness of Nakobe Dean. Oh my God. You're five and seven. Pittsburgh, you're losing that game too. You're five and eight. You're not stopping that offense. You're not good enough. <laughs> Look at this guy here. Watson blows. I thought Tyrod Taylor did too until he beat you. Or I thought Drew Locke blew too. But he beat you. I thought Zach Wilson sucked, but he beat you. Come on, man. Hey, get this. Like LJ said, every media outlet last year had the Eagles competing for the Super Bowl. And I told you at 10 and 1, they're not very good. And you didn't believe me. Well, they weren't very good. So whatever those guys were telling you a year ago that they were going to contend for a Super Bowl, Big Sills was here to tell you, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. Everyone would come on this program on a daily basis and bash me because I was saying, you're not that good. And you were 10 and one. And I said, you're not that good. Right? A niner all day. Did they not come on here and keep attacking me? Because I said, and I would listen to our post-game show. The only guy on our post-game show that kind of was hedging around was Seth. And then finally, when they went to 10-2, and two, Seth went, this is not a good team. I was there since New England. I was there from New England. I didn't think they were that hot. Okay? I never did. But, Dan, wait a minute. Look at our offense. I'm not talking about your offense here. I'm talking about stopping people. You can't stop people. Okay? And by the way, with all this wonderful offensive talent, you have dick to show for it still. Remember that. You have nothing to show for all this. All the money you spent, you have nothing to show for it. You have just as much as the Cowboys do. By the way, the Niners are in that room too. You spent, that's again, this is the beautiful thing about the Chiefs. They spend no money, nothing but draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, draft choices, choices, building foundation, building foundation, staying young staying young and the reason they can do it is clearly
because guess what? No matter how much money you throw at Jalen Hurts, he'll never do what Mahomes does. That's everywhere in the league, and I get that. That's why he's worth that money because it's not just in wins. They don't have to spend the money to win. Think about that. They don't have to spend any money to win except on three dudes. That to spend no money. So you're five and seven with Cleveland. You're five and eight with Pittsburgh. Put that thing back up there, Xander, that opponent's there. Tampa, you're six and eight. They kicked the shit out of you in the playoffs. Mike Evans? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I'm going to give you the Rams because I don't think the Rams are going to be as good as they are without Aaron Donald. Okay? And I think the Rams are a good team and well coached. Seven and eight. Green Bay, crushed. You're seven and nine. Jacksonville, crushed. You're seven and ten. And why? Because you can't stop people. You can't stop people. But still's our offense. I get it. I get it. Better not have any turnovers like he did a year ago. And I think he will. Seven and ten. Yahoo! <laughs> right there in the middle where everyone likes the NFL, in the land of mediocrity, or as they say, parody. Yes, sir. Seven and ten. Because you haven't upgraded your defense. But we're better. No, you're not. How many wins will the Cowboys get now? Sills is acting like a jackass. Why? Because you can't stop people? Do something about it, dude. Stop shopping at the dollar store. Try walking into Neiman Marcus and getting a player. Why don't you spend some money on a player and not a name? And go find a guy and win ball games. Why can't you sign a frontline guy? Because they don't want to. Howie's got $40 million in cap space. And guess what? He didn't do anything with it. He didn't do anything with it. He signed Beckham or um, uh, Barkley. Yeah, a, a, a guy you didn't need. And Orenthal Burks. <laughs> Hey, look, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the list together of all these nobodies. I mean, you guys are like signing people that have been, and they come to Philly, and all of a sudden, they're automatically Hugh Douglas. Or these guys are Brian Dawkins. <laughs> this just doesn't get any better. Okay? Where was Huff? Okay, here, here's this. Huff is replacing Reddick. So did you upgrade? Do you think that's an upgrade on Reddick? How many people think Bryce Huff is an upgrade once you move off of Reddick? I don't. How many people believe that's an upgrade? Watch this one, guys. How many people believe one-year wonder Bryce Huff is an upgrade. No, no, no. How many people believe that he's an upgrade to Reddick? They are moving off. This guy's done this one year in his career. The other guy's done it four years in a row on three different teams. Seals, at the beginning of the season, you said that the Chiefs wouldn't win. I, I did. But they did. Hey, you might be right, but you still got to play the games. Hey, Prince, I couldn't believe two things. With You're right, Prince. I did say that. I didn't think that they'd get back to the AFC title game. I'm not even sure I said they'd get into the playoffs because 
they lose they lose Eric Bieniemy. They lost everything. I can't believe what that guy that guy's season last year was more impressive than the year before. Because you know why, Prince? He did it with even less. He did it with even less. Dude, his greatness was stamped this last year, Mahomes. His greatness was stamped. Nope, it's a younger, cheaper option. Howie Vision. Big Marshall saying that. That's right. Bryce Huff is not an upgrade. It's not an upgrade. You're moving off a of Reddick. You've got basically a one-year, we'll-see Reddick guy. What if he doesn't live up to that? When you had the guy, you didn't have to worry about that. Seals keeps cooking. These moves don't move the needle. I'm sick of this fan base saying, but we got Isaiah Rogers. Hey, 1.4 tells you otherwise. Hey, Pooh, I think the kid might be something though. Pooh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dismiss that. I I I think he's I think there's something there to this kid. Okay, I think there's something there. I, I do. I think there's something there to him. Oh, and here's this one. Hollywood goes, Barkley will get hurt and Jalen will be number one running back again. No, Kenny Gain will be. Because they're not going to run him. Can you imagine this? If Barkley goes down for any significant period of time and he has a, basically, am I right when I say this? Barkley's had like a Dallas Goddard kind of career. Sometimes he's in, sometimes he's not in. Misses games. Is it, isn't that right? I mean, he's constantly banged up. Last year, he, he kind of quit on his team. And I don't blame him. They quit on him. So I'm not really shitting on that. I'm not. Hey, by the way, our friend Tony Casillas, who works with the Dallas Cowboys, He's going to join us. Also, we're going to talk to him a little bit about the upcoming NFL draft. Number two overall pick, former All-Pro. He's going to join us. Winner of two Super Bowls, maybe three, with the Cowboys. Was the number two overall selection by the Atlanta Falcons and works in the broadcast area in Dallas with the Dallas Cowboys. What are the Cowboys doing? And like you guys said, Sills, what do you think the Cowboys do? When it comes to wins, they don't have a running game. They don't have a hammer. They don't have a number two. Um, and you can run on them. I don't know. I, I, I can't see more than six wins, seven wins there either. I, I just don't see it. I think in the last three years, they've gotten worse personnel-wise. But they got worse personnel-wise on offense. I mean, Zeke gone, Amari gone, um, Tyron Smith gone. I just don't see it. I mean, Dak was great last year. So you're going to rely more on Dak to carry the team? I think Dak needs more help. I really do. All right. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Don't forget also, folks, March Madness, our great friends with Underdog Fantasy. Make sure, please, during the NCAA tournament, Sign up. Jacob Sports and Underdog Fantasy are teaming up with 500 of our great followers and our subscribers and viewers. Look, the minimum is 10 bucks. They match it. 20 bucks. They match it. 30 bucks. All the way up to 100. They match it. Simple as that. It's a great time. It's a second bet when it comes to sporting bet in the country next to the Super Bowl. No other event is bet on more. Then the NCAA tournament, a lot of fun people do it. They're in a lot of pools. Remember, when you're working with Underdog Fantasy and with Jacob Sports, the code word is W-I-N. That's W-I-N. Tony Casillas will join us. Once again, that'll be at the bottom of the hour. We will talk to the Dallas Cowboy, what's going on in Dallas. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.